What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another Tottenham update as the countdown begins. Ten days to go till the end of the transfer window. Still no signings have come through the door, but maybe there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Well, I say maybe very loosely, uh, but let's talk about Nicolo Zaniolo, the transfer saga that's been rumbling for four years now. As Fabrizio Romano says, Roma considers Zaniolo available on the January market. Fee could be around 40 million euros. Tottenham have already had talks with the player's agent. There are more clubs interested and um, Nicolo Zaniolo won't be called up for Roma's next game against Spezia this weekend. Tottenham director Fabio Paratici has been a big fan of Zaniolo for many years. He was on his list at Juventus. Roma want money guaranteed in any deal, either a permanent or a loan with an obligation to buy of around 35 to 40 million euros. What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean... I was kind of negative about it the other day uh, when we were talking about Zaniolo because he hasn't really pushed on for Roma this season and he's got he's had a big injury problems previously with the two ACL injuries. But look, if we were to get him, I would be excited because I think the potential upside of the deal but, uh, in terms of what he could bring to the squad and his qualities are very big. And he is still young. He's 23 years of age. So he is still an age where he can he can get over those uh, injury problems. He can have a long, very successful career. And he plays in a few positions, can play out wide, can play through the centre. Um, very good ball carrier, very good striker of the ball as well. Good dribbler. Um, could really bring something to the squad. So I would be excited by that. It's just whether we're going to see the best Saniolo in a Tottenham shirt um, if he were to join. Obviously, there are question marks about that. He was a trailblazer, really, before those big injuries, and he quite hasn't been the same player since he's got injured, albeit we have seen signs of him getting back to his best. If he does get back to his best, then we have a real player on our hands. Completely agree. I think... Um... I think on quality alone, it's a really good signing to make. It's just what really worries me is the injuries that keep creeping around. He's had a big one this year. He seems to have a big injury every year, to be honest, with two, two ACLs as well. Um, look, I don't think he should be our first target. I'm not sure who should be our first target in that position, but I'd rather sign someone like a Mohamed Kudos or someone like that where he doesn't have those injury problems. We've seen the quality that he does have. But if you're talking about quality alone and, and footballing talent alone, this guy can explode. He's got the ability to explode. Um, and I think he's probably got the attributes to succeed in the Premier League as well. He's built really well. He's fast. He's uh, got trickery about him. He's, got, he's creative as well. So I'd like to see him come through the door. I really would. But the only thing that kind of holds my reservations are the injuries, really. That's a big problem, isn't it? It is, and um, it's something that he just picks up a lot, lots of injuries. Um, albeit, um, I think I've, I was looking at his list of injuries, apart from his two ACLs, the other ones haven't been too long. He hasn't missed too many games with the other injuries. But that I think it's just a matter of whether we can get him back to his best. That's the big question. If we can, it's going to be a great, great signing. I think if Conte was here for the foreseeable and he was the one actually managing Zaniolo, then I'd have much more hope because I think that Conte could get quite a lot of out, out of him. But it just depends. If Zaniolo is going to come, then Conte leaves, then ugh, it depends if we can get a manager that gets the best out of him. That's the mm. honest truth. Could be like another Lo Celso kind mm, of thing. Exactly. So that's also something to be wary of, to be honest. But let's move on. And uh, it's the Daily Porro. Uh, Pedro Porro, the Times, saying that Tottenham are growing in confidence of agreeing a deal for Pedro Porro. Sporting want his 45 million uh, release clause, but both clubs are, Shocker. are preparing <laughs> for an agreement to be reached. Ben Jacobs says that Spurs still pushing for Porro and trying to find a solution outside triggering Just the release trigger clause. It. <laughs> trigger it. We need a trigger in These it. Guys, trigger the clause, these man. guys, man. These guys. Oh, I'm sick of it. They'll I'm do anything. They'll do anything not to really Re meet the release Anything clause. Anything but to trigger the clause. They'll literally pay like one million below the release yeah. clause and play a player in there just to, no, just to win the negotiation. Just, oh, just pay the money. Pay the money. How many times do you have to say it? Do you think this deal's going to get done? And we we um I read in port. There's a Portuguese outlet there claiming the deal's fallen through. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Ebo uh, uh, Ebola claiming the deal's fallen through. So yeah, I, mean, I mean I don't not know the how reliable. I don't know who's, who's uh, more reliable, but oh, 
I don't know, every day we're in the same thing and we don't seem any closer. Uh, you know, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. This is, this is the most positive update we've ever got. Growing in confidence. I mean, what, what do you mean? We're always, we're always confident a deal is going to be done. I wouldn't be this. It's just not beyond the possibility. We go, we uh, wake up tomorrow and you know, the deal's knows the deal's falling through. We wake up it. tomorrow and he signed for Chelsea. Yeah, so exactly. They could easily stump up. They're stumping up the cash for anyone right now. So we could easily be gazumped or whatever. 45 million euros, like not m most clubs in, in who are a top six club like us, uh, if they really need him, aren't going to think twice about it. We're the only club in the top six who would think twice about it. Look what Liverpool did with Gakpo. They didn't think twice about a bit of giving the asking price. And it was less than this, I think. Mm. So, um, sorry, it was more than this, I mean. So, I don't know. Uh, I hope it gets done. We're desperate for him. But... It's just like nothing seems to be progressing. Uh, hopefully, I'm hopeful, but I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're hearing the same thing every time. Yeah, I think it's going to get done personally. I think on deadline day, this is one that's good. Unless, unless we get gazumped and, some, and our, another team come in. If no other team come in, I think this deal is going to get done. I really do. But that might be just more hope than anything else. But let's move on. Let's talk about the goalkeeping situation once again. David Rea, the Times are reporting that Tottenham have asked Brentford about David Rea's situation this month. And we're told that he is not for sale. Spurs are considering testing Brentford's resolve for the keeper who will have one year left in his deal in the summer. Yeah, and it's becoming an increasingly big situation, the goalkeeper situation. We're hearing that, you know, Conte is becoming a bit, uh, is becoming even more worried about the goalkeeper situation right now. And that um, he is really worried about the form of Lloris. And um, he rightly so. He's making mistake after mistake right now. Uh, maybe he'll get to a situation where either he gets taken out of the firing line for a bit and then can rejuvenate or he just um, gets his form back. But as of right now, it's worrying, and um, I like. I would like to see us get a goalkeeper in, in a perfect world right now. Um, but if it, if, uh, if we can't get Ray in right now, we could agree a deal for like. Why, I see how many times you see clubs like agree a deal for the summer. Why can't we ever do that? We never do anything for the future. Uh, we just look for good deals that are available right now. That's what we do. But um, I think we should go for him right now. We should test the waters uh, but I would like to see him as our number one in, in the summer where would you kind of rank the goalkeeping situation in terms of the list of hierarchy of importance um, of transfers well it's getting <coughs> I guess look whether it be a knee jerk or not to say it's our most important right now is interesting because you wouldn't I wouldn't have said it a few weeks ago but now you know the mistakes he's making and the like the just like the unforced errors uh Loris is making right now is pushing it up the list um but I would still want a I still think with better defenders ahead of him and um and a wing back I think he wouldn't be as under much pressure potentially as he is now. So I would still put him ahead of the goalkeeper, but he is potentially more important than a forward right now. So you think maybe maybe third after a centre back and a right back? Mm. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Um, next up, let's talk about Yves Bissouma. Matt Law uh, brought us yesterday that Chelsea made an inquiry for Tottenham's Yves Bissouma, and Chelsea tried to include Hakim Ziyech in a swap deal for Bissouma. Yeah, I wouldn't want Ziyech. Uh, I mean, look. I like Ziyech. I think he's a good player. I just don't. I just. I don't think he's done it in the Premier League. Ziyech. I, I don't rate him that highly. I think he's got a good left foot, got a good cross on him. Um, I just don't. I don't fancy him in, in our Conte system right now, and especially not in a swap deal for Basuma. I think Basuma is probably worth a lot more than Ziyech, in my opinion, um, value-wise. So, um, unless it's not Australia, is it money plus Ziyech? He said so, money plus Ziyech, yeah. Okay, depends how much money it is, I guess. I think I would like to persist with, with Basuma a bit more. It's only been six months. I understand it's been, you know, he's struggled to get a place and he hasn't been great. And Conte's come under a lot of criticism for that. But I, I've seen a lot of midfielders, you know, um, yeah, I remember Fabinho for the first six months at Liverpool. He never, he didn't start. He wasn't getting a look mm. in, and then all of a sudden, the difference is one of the their better players. The difference is Fabinho had never played Premier League before, and um, Bissouma has been one of the best in the Premier League for the last couple of years in the central of the park for Brighton. I think Bissouma can uh, become a really good player for us, but I'm not sure if that's going to be under Antonio Conte. That's the problem. I think he can do it. 
I think you know, I don't see why not. I understand it's not working right now, but it doesn't mean it's never going to work. Mm. Um, and I just think six months of after signing a player, I don't think you should, we should write him off that, that quickly. I think that would be a wrong thing to do, especially someone of his talent. So I would give it a bit more time, wait till the end of the season before making any decisions like that, unless we get like a really big offer. Um, I don't see why we would cut our losses so soon, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to agree, to be honest. I think that we were all so excited in the summer when we signed Bissouma. I mean, he was the one that I said I'm most excited about out of all the signings that we brought in. So, yeah, I think it's only right to persist with him and and um, and just mould him into the team because we all know the quality of the player. You could argue that's one of the big, bigger criticisms you can give Conte, not getting, not getting uh, performances out of Pesuma, considering how good he was at Brighton and how excited everyone was. Um, but still, look, it's still very early. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if he's like if if the Champions League is where uh, maybe we see the best of him. If we might maybe change formation in that competition, potentially. And last but not least, let's talk about Fabio Paratici. As Di Marzio said today, the Italian Football Federation prosecutor has officially requested a 20-month and 10-day suspension for Fabio Paratici as part of the investigation into Juventus. And he went on to say a bit later on in the day that the verdict regarding Paratici's investigation is expecting this evening. Worrying stuff. Yeah, I've got no idea like what he's, like, like what the consequences are, what... Um if he's if he's a suspension of for dealings with uh, just uh, in general, is it just in Italy? Um, is are these charges if he is found guilty are they sackable offences potentially? Uh, how is that going to affect our planning going forward? Is this trial something that's preventing us from signing players? Like I don't know, I don't know the ins and outs. I've just heard about the investigation, but I don't know what the consequences really are. Yeah, me neither, to be honest. But I mean, all this is is fairly worrying, and if he does get um, a suspension for football for, for 20 months and 10 days. I mean, surely that means he can't carry on his work at Spurs. That's for sure. So yeah, we'd, have to, we'd, have to, we'd have to get a new sporting director. If he can't deal with any, if he can't do any deals, what's the point? Yeah, unless, because this is from the Italian Football Federation, unless that's only in Italy. So we can't sign any Italians. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know if that means we can't sign any Italians or he can't work in Italy. I don't know. I, don't I got know. no idea. I got no idea. It's hard to know. But if anyone can shed any more light on that, do let us know in the comment section below. But that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding any of the news stories we've brought to you today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, How come on you Spurs. Spurs.